Finally, astronomers are finding more of the billions of super-Earths they believe to be out there. Super-Earths are larger, more common and more habitable than Earth itself. Astronomers are able to learn more about how Earth's rocky relatives appear around other stars as they increase the known population of far-off planets or exoplanets. And they frequently stumble across oddballs in their studies, such as a recently discovered planet bathed in molten magma whose year only lasts half a day. It is the largest super-Earth ever found in the universe. What is hiding on this massive super-Earth? Could it somehow be habitable to humans? Let's find out. Exoplanets are planets that circle stars outside of our solar system and are now often found by astronomers. However, researchers working on NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey satellite discovered a few unusual planets in the habitable zones of their parent stars in the summer of 2022. One planet orbits its star in less than three days and is 30% larger than Earth. The other is 70% bigger than Earth and may have a deep ocean. Super-Earths, which are more massive than the Earth but smaller than ice giants like Uranus and Neptune, are these two exoplanets. Scientists still believe that life can only exist on Earth and nowhere else in the universe. It would make sense to concentrate the search for life on planets that are Earth-like or have characteristics that are similar to Earth. However, studies have revealed that a super-Earth, like the ones recently discovered, offers scientists the best chance of discovering life on an extraterrestrial planet. The majority of super-Earths revolve around core dwarf stars, which have a lower mass and a longer lifespan than the Sun. For every star like the Sun, there are hundreds of core dwarf stars and researchers have discovered super-Earths orbiting 40% of the cold dwarfs they have studied. Using that figure, astronomers predict that the Milky Way alone has tens of billions of super-Earths in habitable regions where liquid water can exist. Water is necessary for all life on Earth, hence it is considered essential for habitability. Super-Earths are the most prevalent type of exoplanet in the Milky Way according to current calculations, making up around one-third of all exoplanets. The distance to the nearest is merely six light-years. You could even argue that the lack of a planet between Earth and Neptune in our solar system makes it uncommon. Super-Earths are also considerably easier to find and analyze than Earth-sized planets, which makes them excellent targets in the hunt for extraterrestrial life. Astronomers utilize one of two techniques to find exoplanets. One searches for a planet's gravitational pull on its parent star, while the other searches for a star's light briefly dimming as a planet passes in front of it. With a larger planet, both of these detection techniques are simpler. Earth is the best of all possible universes, according to German philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, who made this claim more than 300 years ago. Leibniz's reasoning sought to explain the existence of evil, while contemporary astrobiologists have investigated a related issue by focusing on what makes a planet habitable to life. It turns out that Earth is not the ideal place that could exist. The climate has fluctuated over time, from ocean boiling hot to planet-wide deep freeze cold due to the tectonic activity of the Earth and variations in the brightness of the Sun. For most of the Earth's 4.5 billion year history, humans and other huge animals have been unable to live there. Simulations imply that Earth's long-term habitability was not predetermined, but rather a result of chance. Literally, it is a blessing that we are alive. Researchers have identified a number of characteristics that make a planet particularly favorable for life. Geological activity is more likely to be present on larger planets, which is thought to favor biological evolution. The most habitable planet would therefore be between 20% and 30% larger by volume and have nearly twice the mass of Earth. The average temperature would be 77 degrees Fahrenheit and the waters would be shallow enough for light to encourage life all the way to the sea floor. It would have an atmosphere that is denser than Earth's, 
and would serve as a protective layer. To allow life on the planet more time to grow, it would orbit a star older than the Sun and it would have a powerful magnetic field that shields it from cosmic radiation. These characteristics, in combination, are thought to make a planet extremely livable. Super-Earths have several characteristics of highly livable planets by definition. 20 super-Earth exoplanets have been found so far, and while they may not be the finest possible worlds, they are theoretically more habitable than Earth. Super-Earths can be composed of gas, rock, or a combination of both, and are larger than Earth but lighter than ice giants like Neptune and Uranus. They range in size from being up to twice the mass of Earth to being twice its size. The term super-Earth exclusively refers to exoplanets that are larger than Earth and smaller than Neptune. It does not imply that they are similar to Earth in any way. The exact nature of these planets is yet unknown because they are unlike anything in our solar system, despite being typical of planets discovered so far in our galaxy. In the past three decades, we have found a wide variety of unusual planets that we were unaware even existed and that is unlike anything else in our solar system. Super-Earths have the potential to be up to 10 times as large as Earth. We don't yet understand these planets well enough to predict when they might cease to have rocky surfaces. However, there may be a wide range of planetary compositions in the mass range of 3 to 10 times that of Earth such as water worlds, snowball planets, or planets that, like Neptune, are primarily made of thick gas. Sub-Neptunes or mini-Neptunes are other names for exoplanets that are larger than the super-Earth size limit. A super-Earth and two mini-Neptunes were found in 2019 by NASA's Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite, or TESS, circling a cool, dim star 73 light-years away in the southern constellation of Pictor. The M-type dwarf star is roughly 40% smaller than the Sun in terms of both size and mass, and its surface temperature is about a third lower. Approximately 25% larger than Earth, TOI 270b, the innermost planet, is probably a rocky super-Earth. It travels 13 times closer to the star than Mercury does, orbiting it every 3.4 days. The scientific team calculates that TOI 270b has a mass that is approximately 1.9 times bigger than Earth's based on statistical analysis of known exoplanets of comparable size. The other two planets, TOI 270c and D orbit the star every 5.7 and 11.4 days and are respectively 2.4 and 2.1 times larger than Earth. Both may resemble Neptune in our solar system, despite being only slightly larger than it. Their compositions are dominated by gases rather than rock, and they likely weigh about 7 and 5 times as much as Earth, making them mini-Neptunes. It is hoped that further study of the star TOI-270 will shed light on how two of these mini-Neptunes and a nearly Earth-sized planet arose. Additional planets in the system may be discovered with further study. The surface of planet D would be too warm for the presence of liquid water, which is thought to be a crucial requirement for a potentially habitable world. However, further research may find more rocky planets that are slightly farther away from the star, where colder temperatures would allow liquid water to accumulate on their surfaces. There has recently been a fascinating addition to the list of livable worlds. Exoplanets that have left their star systems have begun to be found by astronomers, and the Milky Way may contain billions of them. If a super-Earth with a liquid surface and a dense atmosphere are evicted from its solar system, it may be able to support life for tens of billions of years, considerably longer than Earth could before the Sun dies. One of planetary science's most puzzling puzzles might get some new insight from a newly discovered exoplanet that is only 200 light-years away. The object known as TOI 1075b is one of the largest examples of a super-Earth exoplanet we've discovered so far, with a radius of about 1.8 times that of Earth. 
Additionally, it is firmly located in the small planet radius gap, which is a region that appears to be deficient in planets between 1.5 and 2 Earth radii. Humans would gain a lot of weight if they could visit TOI 1075b, given that it was close to Earth. According to NASA, you would weigh nearly three times as much on Earth. There have been slightly smaller rocky super-Earths discovered. As a result, somewhat larger worlds, also referred to as mini-Neptunes, have bolt up with puffy atmospheres. However, the area in between resembles a desert. Not all of that extra bulk is puff, either. The mass of TOI 1075b is 9.95 times that of the Earth. At the inferred density, the exoplanet is most likely rocky, like Mercury, Earth, Mars and Venus. That's far too heavy for a gaseous world. It's the perfect candidate for testing theories of planetary formation and evolution because of its peculiarities. The small planet radius gap wasn't discovered until 2017, when there was a sufficient number of exoplanets, planets beyond the solar system, for researchers to discern a trend. Very few worlds that lie on either side of that distance have been discovered for exoplanets that are in close proximity to their Sun. The most prevalent theory for this seems to be that, below a certain size, an exoplanet simply lacks the mass to maintain an atmosphere against the evaporative radiation so close to the host star. There are a number of other theories that could also account for this. The model predicts that exoplanets in the gap should have fairly large atmospheres that are mainly made of hydrogen and helium. TOI 1075b was found in data collected by NASA's TESS Exoplanet Hunting Telescope. TESS searches for faint, recurring dips in the light of other stars that could be caused by an alien planet orbiting those stars. Based on how much of the star's light is being dimmed, astronomers can also determine the exoplanet's radius. According to TESS data, an extraterrestrial planet with a radius of 1.72 times that of the Earth and an orbital period of roughly 14.5 hours was orbiting the orange dwarf star TOI-1075. Astronomer Zara Essak of MIT, who researches hot super-Earths, was alerted to this. The then-candidate world met the requirements for a radius gap world at that radius and close by. Weighing this exoplanet was the next stage in the process of trying to comprehend its makeup. This requires making use of the gravitational influence that an exoplanet exerts on its home star. The star supplies the majority of the gravitational pull during a star-planet interaction, but the planet also pulls back on the star in a very small way. That means the star gently wobbles while it is stationary, and astronomers can notice this by noticing minute variations in the star's light. These variations can be used to estimate the planet's mass that is rattling the star, if we know its mass. ESAC and her co-workers were able to precisely determine the exoplanet's mass to 9.95 Earth masses since TOI-1075 has a mass and radius that are around 60% that of our own Sun, and 1.791 Earth radii were obtained from their exact measurements of the size. You can figure out something's average density if you know how big and how heavy it is. Also, TOI 1075b proved to be a complete chunk. 9.32 grams are contained in every cubic centimeter of it. It is a contender for the title of densest super Earth, as it is about twice as dense as Earth's average density of 5.51 grams per cubic centimeter. In the mass gap, an exoplanet should have a sizable hydrogen-helium atmosphere. The density of TOI 1075b is not consistent with a dense atmosphere. This is quite strange. The exoplanet's alternative, though, may be even more exciting. We do not anticipate the planet to have kept a HHE envelope based on the projected composition of TOI 1075b and its extremely brief orbital period. 
But since TOI 1075B's equilibrium temperature is hot enough to melt a rocky surface, it could either have no atmosphere, bare rock, a metal silicate vapor atmosphere with a composition determined by the vaporizing magma ocean on the surface, or, especially at the low end of its permitted mean density range, possibly a thin HHE CO2 or other atmosphere. Yes, you heard correctly. Due to its proximity to its star, TOI 1075b is so hot that it may have a surface ocean of magma that generates an atmosphere of evaporated rock. The good news is that we may find out. JWST is extremely skilled in peering into the atmospheres of exoplanets, as we have only lately discovered. By pointing it at TOI 1075b, it should be able to determine whether the planet has a silica atmosphere, a thin atmosphere, or no atmosphere at all. This information may reveal previously unknown aspects of planet formation and evolution, as well as how super-Earths lose their gas. Astronomers will search for biosignatures, byproducts of biology that can be found in a planet's atmosphere, in order to find life on faraway exoplanets. The James Webb Space Telescope was not optimized for studying exoplanets because it was built before astronomers learned about them. But it can perform some of this science, and in its first year of operation, it will aim for two super-Earths that might be livable. The planets discovered this summer, as well as another set of super-Earths with enormous oceans, discovered in the last few years, make for appealing targets for James Webb. The next generation of enormous ground-based telescopes, including the 39-metre Extremely Large Telescope and the 30-metre Telescope, as well as the 25.4-metre Giant Magellan Telescope, will, however, have the highest prospects of discovering indications of life in the atmospheres of exoplanets. By the end of the decade, all of these telescopes, which are currently under construction, should be gathering data. Astronomers are aware that life's essential components are present in the universe, but livable does not imply inhabited. It's plausible that life on Earth was an exceptional accident until scientists discover proof of life elsewhere in the universe. Even if there are many reasons why a habitable planet wouldn't show indications of life, if scientists continue to hunt for signs of life on these extremely livable super-Earths over the following years and don't find any, people might be forced to believe that the universe is a lonely place. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, Make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.